All right, welcome everyone. Can we say praise the Lord? Praise, praise the Lord. Lord. Hallelujah. Another victory is won. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's just give him a shout. Thank you, Lord, for your blessings, Lord. We are grateful to be here in your presence today. And Holy Spirit, come. We usher you in with our praises and our worship. Let your glory be here today. Show us your glory, Father, as we worship you and we give you praise and honor. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We shout our hallelujahs. Glory to your name. Hallelujah. Let's do it. Glory to your name. Thank you, Jesus. These are the days of Elijah, declaring the word of the Lord. And these are the days of your servant Moses, righteousness being restored. And though these are days of great trials, of famine and darkness and sword, Still we are the voice in the desert crying, bury the way of the Lord. Behold, he comes, riding on the clouds, shining like the sun, and the trumpet calls. So lift your voice, year of Jubilee, and out of Zion's hill, salvation These are the days of Ezekiel, the dry bones become in his flesh. And these are the days of your servant David, you build in the temple of praise. And these are the days of the harvest, the fields are wide in the world. And we are your laborers in your vineyard, declaring the word of the Lord. Behold, he comes, riding on the clouds, shining like the sun. At the trumpet call, so lift your voice, year of jubilee. Now to Zion, till salvation comes. Behold, he comes, riding on the clouds, shining like the sun. At the trumpet call, so lift your voice, year of jubilee. Now to Zion, till salvation there's no God like Jehovah, 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 there's no God like Jehovah. 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 Oh, he comes, riding on the clouds, shining like the sun. At the trumpet call, so lift your voice, year of jubilee. Now of Zion till salvation comes. Behold, he comes. Shining like the sun at the trumpet call So lift your voice, year of jubilee Now of Zion till salvation come Come, oh Lord, come now Hallelujah, Lord, we praise you We thank you, Jesus, hallelujah Let's give him praise, glory to his name Oh, let everything that has breath praise the Lord today. Yes. Oh, praise in the valley. Praise on the mountain. I praise when I'm sure. Praise when I'm doubting. I praise when I'm number, praise when I'm surrounded. Cause I praise in the water, my enemies drowning. As long as I'm praying, I've got a reason to praise the Lord. Oh, 
Jesus, for your angels, Lord, that you surround us with, Father. Lord, that you keep us in your hands, that you keep us, Lord, going on the straight and narrow, Lord, as we listen to you, as we follow you, and we praise you, Jesus. Oh, Jesus, we praise you. Here I am. I've come to find you. Here I am to see your grace. To bring to you an offering. I have to ask myself one thing. How can I do anything but praise? You, you are God, you are Lord, you are 
for your blessings. Oh, we glorify your name. Oh, glory to your name, Lord Jesus. Oh, Father, we are so grateful to be in your presence. We are so grateful, Lord, that today is a new day. Your days are new and fresh every morning, Father. And we are just so thankful. Thankful, Lord Jesus for your blessings, for your protection, for your hand upon our nation, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, yes. I know you are doing a good work in our nation. Lord, after yesterday, Lord, we are just here to praise and give you all the glory. Lord, I know your hand was on this nation yesterday, was on former President Trump. And I thank you, Lord, for his protection. And, Lord, I just pray that you will use that for your glory. Lord, that you will open the eyes of this nation. And, Lord, the, the veil will be removed from their eyes, and they will see with clarity how all that violence is unnecessary. Lord, that we should once again be one nation under God. Lord, that we as a nation will rise up before you and declare your glory. Lord, that we will come to our knees, turn from our wicked ways, and declare that you are God and you will hear from heaven and you will heal this land. You will heal this people, Lord Jesus. Lord, as we raise up our praises to you, Lord, we have the victory in Christ. Hallelujah. And we praise you, Jesus. Oh, we praise you. Found in your hands, fullness of joy, every fear suddenly wiped away. Here in your presence, all of my gains now fade away, every crown no longer on display here in your presence heaven is trembling in all of your wonder the kings and the kingdoms are standing i 
You are glorious, Lord Jesus. And there is nothing, Lord Jesus, that compares to you. You are matchless. Oh, sweet Jesus. Oh, sweet Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Your name, Lord, brings power. Oh, sweet Jesus, Lord, you're wonderful. Oh, we praise you, Lord, we exalt you. Oh, we experience your glory. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we have so much to be thankful for. Lord, that you have given us the shield of faith, the breastplate of righteousness, Father, that we can withstand the attacks of the enemy. For no weapon formed against us shall prosper. And yes, Lord, we have things that the enemy has stolen us from us, but Father, we are here to take it back. And Lord, we are now equipped, Father, that we will stop his attacks in the name of Jesus. Lord, because you have given us that authority, that authority in the name of Jesus to withstand Satan and to declare that he is done he is defeated and he cannot take from us anymore because we are children of God we stand in his presence with our full armor on and we will take it back today hallelujah Lord we will take it back today and we praise you Jesus hallelujah oh let's do that today amen thank you Lord Take it back with the enemy stole. Oh, 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 oh. Take it all back, take it all back. I'm taking it back with the enemy stole. Oh, 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 oh. You can't speak the lies of my family. He don't own my soul I'm taking back what the enemy stole I'm raising the battle cry I'm 
stronghold and the banner high with the power of the Holy Ghost. I'm taking back what the enemy stole. Oh, 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 Take it all back, take it all back. I'm taking back what the enemy stole. Oh, 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 oh. Take it all back, take it all back I'm taking back what the enemy stole Oh, give him a shout, hallelujah, thank you Lord, we praise you Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah We're taking it all back yes. Amen, glory to God, hallelujah Thank you, worship team, hallelujah It's good to be back in the house of the Lord Amen, Amen. Hey, God is so, so good And I'm also grateful today to know this We got air conditioning in the place Amen. Amen. You know, those little things we take for granted, but, you know, praise God. My God is so good to us all the time. Everyone agreed, said? Amen. Amen. I want to welcome you to uh, Grace Point Church, where your past doesn't define your future. also want to welcome those who are watching online, that we're so glad you're taking a part of the service today. And saints of God, God's got great things for us. Everyone agreed with that? I believe that we are going to see many things take place in our land, in our nation, and in our lives. I believe with my whole heart we're going to see victory after victory after victory. And I believe God is establishing the plans for us. God is putting us on the right path. And I believe we're going to see God's hand move in dynamic ways like we've never seen before. Everyone agreed, said? Amen. Amen. Didn't convince the devil. Everyone agreed, said? Okay, I think we're starting to convince him now. <laughs> Hallelujah. God is so, so good. And we're going to continue in our series, Take It All Back. And I don't know, but sometimes I wake up singing that chorus of that song. Because every new day I get an opportunity to take it back. Glory to his name. And, you know, and so we're, our, our, our message is titled today in the series, Take It All Back, Knowing Our Enemy, His Tactics, and Our Mission, Part 3. All right. I, and if you haven't figured it out by now, I have the gift of continuation. <laughs> I can continue and continue and continue. Amen? So here's what I think we're going to need to do, okay? We need to get a paper cutter here. And when I finish my message at a half hour, the next week I can cut my notes again, right? <laughs> oh, never mind. Okay. So saints of God, it is very, very, very clear that we are living in perilous times. It's very, very clear that these spiritual battles are going on all around us. And we're living in a time where it's very clear that the kingdom of darkness is advancing in many areas of this world. And unfortunately, many people have been taken captive by the darkness, believers and non-believers. We see it all over. And Satan is also, through this whole situation, trying to drive back the brave Christians who are raising the battle cry who are willing to hold the banner high. Jehovah Nisi, we preached on that, holding the banner high to push back the advancing gates of hell. And I'm here to today declare, saints of God, once again, we as a body, we as a church, we are not going to be afraid of this battle, but we're going to face this battle head on, and we're going to see the victory happen. We're going to see the Jericho walls come down. We're going to see the spiritual blinders removed from people's eyes. We are going to see people delivered and set free from drugs and alcohol. We are going to see the kingdom of God advance and take back what the enemy has stolen. Amen. Hallelujah. And, and Saints Ephesians 6 and 12, I'm just going to read this portion of scripture again. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, against principalities, against power, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Now, this leads me to the first point of the message this morning is this. Being aware of spiritual warfare and Satan's tactics can be good and bad. We need truth and balance. And one of the things the Holy Spirit spoke to me about when I was going to preach this series is that I needed to make sure that I taught the balance on spiritual warfare. As a matter of fact, I think I told Pastor Terry, I've got to make sure I get this into the message. I've got to preach the balance of spiritual warfare. And when I look at the spiritual warfare, this, the good part of it, this is, you're taking notes, just write the word good. The good thing about spiritual warfare is that it reveals to us the power of darkness around us and the importance of our mission. I want us to understand the truth today, saints of God. We are on a mission. 
And our mission is not mission impossible. Our mission is mission possible. Amen? And even when an angel of light appears and, and, and saints of God, we have to understand, we have, knowing the spiritual warfare is going on, we know that spiritual light will appear, we can also be alert and prepared. Say prepared. Prepared for the attack that's going to come. Spiritual uh, warfare reveals to us our adversary. And saints, whether you want to believe it or not, we have a real adversary. And one of the ways that Satan diseases people, he makes them believe he's not there. He doesn't care. Satan is real. He is a real adversary. And saints, uh, spiritual warfare also helps us to be aware of Satan's devices and his tactics and not to be taken by surprise. Saints, how many ever had someone scare you? Well, you know what, saints of God, we get to get to the place in our walk with the Lord Jesus Christ that when we're facing this kind of situation, we don't get fearful and we don't get scared because we know in whom we believe and we know in whom we trust and we know that we're more than overcomers through him who loves us. Amen? And saints, we also have to understand this. We need to realize that we have a faith-empowered authority to defend, to defeat, to defend and to defeat. Amen? We need to realize that we have a faith-empowered authority to defend and to defeat in this spiritual warfare that's going on around us right now. And saints of God, I'm declaring today that we're going to start flexing these muscles. We're going to flex them. And we're going to believe God to do great and mighty things. 2 Corinthians 2 and 11 says this. Lest Satan should get an advantage of, of, of us, we are not ignorant of his devices. Now, as I was studying this portion of Scripture, I, I realized what one of the devices that we need to talk about on this portion of Scripture here, and I'll get to it in just a moment. But the word advantage means this. It means to take advantage of, to defraud, to exploit, to outwit, and to rob. And saints of God, I want you to know something right now. That's what Satan's plan is, to take advantage of you, to exploit you, to rob you, to outwit you and to steal from you. Now, what does word, what, Paul uses this word, outwit. What does Paul mean here? Okay, I mean, you know, to take advantage of, to translate outwit there. So what's Paul meaning here? Well, how many have ever heard me say context, context, context? To understand what the Bible is saying, you've got to get it into context. Everyone agree said that? Amen. Because I can get up here right now and tell you that our God's a chicken because we're covered by the wings of the Almighty. Okay, what's the context we're talking about here? And, and so what happens here is that Paul is dealing with a church that has a believer who is in gross sin. And this man is in a gross sin that he is having an inappropriate relationship either with his stepmom or his mother. According to the commentators, it, it could be either one of them. And he's having this immoral relationship, physical relationship with this person. And the church is going... Everything's okay. Everything's wonderful. Everything's right. And then the Apostle Paul comes along and says, whoa, back up a few steps here. You know, the Bible says you should not be doing that. Everyone agreed, said? Because the Bible teaches the only correct sexual relationship is with a husband and wife in marriage. Amen? That's the only one God approves of. And so he's having this relationship with his mom or his stepmom. The church is applauding like this is a great thing going on. And Paul says, um, wake up here. Either you deal with it according to Scripture or I'm going to come and deal with it. Well, the church then woke up and they dealt with it. But here came the problem. The man repented. The man got right with God. And he came back to be restored. And here's where the enemy was taking advantage of them. They refused to forgive him. They looked at his gross sin. All sin is gross, okay? In my book, All Sin Sent Jesus to the Cross, okay? They looked at his gross sin and says, we can't forgive this man. We can't let him come and be a part of our fellowship again because of all the horrible things he has done. Now, I'm going to stop right there. Don't show hands. If every one of us knew about everyone's past and what we've done in the past, would we be accepted? So, 
Satan here is taken advantage of them. They're being outwitted, okay? 2 Corinthians 7, 8. So that contrary wise, you ought rather to, what? Forgive him. And what's that next verse? And comfort lest perhaps such a one shall be swallowed up with overmuch sorrow. Wherefore, I beseech you that you would confirm your love toward him. Now, why am I getting here? Christians, we have a habit of shooting our wounded. Now, I'm not trying to bring up bad memories here, okay? But especially in the Assemblies of God, we've had some big-name preachers fall. We need to be praying for them, okay? But when they truly repent, you ready for this? We need to forgive them. The gifts and calling of God are without repentance. Amen? Now, the word swallowed up here. Well, let me go back there. This word here. This is very, very important here. If you refuse to forgive your brothers or your sisters trespasses, the word of God clearly says, then your heavenly Father cannot forgive your trespasses. Now, I want you to think for a minute. Don't acknowledge, don't raise a hand. Who in your life or who in this church, hopefully none, but you have unforgiveness towards and you refuse to forgive, is it worth being swallowed up? Because this word swallowed up here means this in the Greek. Where it says this, swallowed up with total extinction as a possible result. Amen? So being outwitted here, what Satan is doing here, he's taking advantage of them because they refuse to forgive those who have messed up and blown blown the mark away. They messed up. But here's what we have to understand, saints of God. Jesus Christ forgave the offender. Everyone said, and if Jesus Christ removed this offender's uh, sin from him and dropped him in the sea of forgetfulness, we have no right at that point to put up a, a, a fishing pole in that water and begin to fish it back up because God has put up a no fishing sign. Amen. Amen? And then God has removed their sins as far as the east is from the west. And who are we to point them out once they have been forgiven? Amen? Amen? And yet, they're getting taken advantage of here, being outwitted, because, for number one, they refuse to forgive. They're bringing destruction to a person who has been forgiven, who has repented, and they both end up being swallowed up and outwitted. And whether you want to realize it or not, unforgiveness is a destructive device of Satan. It destroys every one of us who holds on to the bitterness, the resentment, the unforgiveness. And I can hear some saying right now, but pastor, you don't understand what happened. You don't understand. I may not understand what happened. I may not. But I do know this. God wants you free. Yes. For who the Son is set free is what? Free indeed. And you need to recognize the holding on to that unforgiveness is swallowing you up. And that unforgiveness is trying to destroy you. And if we're going to take back what the enemy stole, we have to be at the place where we're willing to forgive those who messed up big time. Amen? The blood of Jesus Christ cleanses their sin. The blood of Jesus Christ can cleanse my sin also. Amen? God is so good, isn't he? 2 Corinthians 11, again, it says, lest Satan should get advantage of us, we are not ignorant of his devices. Now, how many like to be termed and called, I'm saying you're ignorant? How many like that? How many say, 
Ignorance and insult. No, dumb. Idiot. Airhead. Those are insults. Ignorant simply means this. You don't know. It has nothing to do with dumb. It has nothing to do with an airhead. It has nothing to do with that. When you're ignorant of something, you simply do not know anything about it. And I'll be honest with you. There are a lot of things I'm ignorant about. And there's a lot of things that you are ignorant about. Simply because we haven't learned them. I don't know how to do brain surgery. I'm ignorant when it comes to brain surgery. You ought to be glad. I can't cut a straight line on a piece of wood. Can you imagine me trying to cut something in your head, okay? There's a lot of things that all of us are ignorant about, but it doesn't mean we're dumb. It doesn't mean we're stupid. It's just simply we don't know. And what Paul is simply saying here, that, that, that we're not ignorant of his devices. We know his devices. The word devices simply means this. It means evil, skin, evil scheming and sinister plans. And one of those evil schemings and sinister plans is simply unforgiveness. Saints of God, I want us to understand something right now, that we must be set free from unforgiveness. Everyone agreed, said? Amen. Or is there no me? Amen? Spiritual warfare also reveals to us God's power is greater than all the powers of darkness around us. Hallelujah. Amen. Spiritual warfare reveals to us in the name of Jesus Christ, we have authority over the powers of hell, the powers of darkness, and our adversary. Amen. I remember the story about the seven sons of Sceva. How many ever heard that story? They're watching what the apostles are doing. They're casting out demons in the name of Jesus. And the seven sons of Sceva come up to him and say, hey, give us that same power. And they go out and try to go out and cast demons out in the, in the name of Jesus. And what the demons do? The demons whip up on them. And it says that they left bleeding and naked. As a matter of fact, is what the King James Version says. They went bleeding and naked and running away because they were using the name of Jesus without the power and the authority to use the name. They weren't saved. But here's something good, saints of God. You and I have the power and the authority to use the name of Jesus. And as a matter of fact, the, the demons spoke to the seven sons of Sceva and says, Paul, I know, and Jesus, I know, but who are you? And I got news for you, saints of God. When we walk Satan's way, he knows our name. Because our names are, I believe, are engrafted upon the hands of Jesus. He knows our name. He knows our God, Jesus. And we have the power and the authority to go in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And spiritual warfare reveals that to us in a greater way. I don't have to be afraid of the powers of hell. Amen. Hallelujah. Spiritual warfare. Warfare reveals to us that we must live in, that we don't, we don't have to live in constant fear, but in constant faith. I know sometimes people get all, oh, talk about the demonic things, we get all scared and all that, this is where balance comes from here. I don't have to live in fear of it. I was talking to a good friend a couple weeks ago, and we were talking about this, this portion of Scripture, actually, and talking about the, the demonic power and all that. And I, I remember us saying, demons don't freak me out. Demonic powers don't freak me out. You know why? Number one, I know who I am in Christ. Yes. Amen? And I know this. Number two, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I know that beyond a shadow of a doubt. And saints of God, I know number three, it says, I got the power of the Holy Ghost residing in me. The same spirit that raised Christ Jesus from the dead now dwells in my mortal body. I don't have to be afraid in situations like this. As a matter of fact, I, I like that old Energizer bunny, I think something that they put on their shoulders that are come and make my day. Come on, Satan, come make my day. Amen? Now, that doesn't mean we shouldn't be aware. Because a soldier who's not aware of their situation is not a very good soldier. Amen? We need to be aware. Now, the bad, okay? The bad about spiritual warfare. Spiritual warfare can cause some Christians to become unbalanced, say unbalanced, in their daily life. And when we become unbalanced, it becomes devastating to us spiritually, emotionally, and physically. You see, here's what happens. When a Christian becomes unbalanced in spiritual warfare, we're looking for a demon under every bush. 
our whole life becomes consumed, looking for a demon here, looking for a demon there. And what happens is we begin to look for a demon everywhere. We are we can be filled with a spirit of fear. And because when we're looking for a demon everywhere, we magnify the power of the demon in our life, and we don't realize it. Saints of God, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but what? Sound mind. Our focus is when we're on balances. It begins to shift from the greatness of our God, his power, his authority, his mission, his purpose, and the residing Holy Spirit in us to looking at Satan and magnifying him in every situation. Saints of God, this week here at church, I closed up my laptop. I've been was, had this message on there and all this kind of. I closed up the laptop and my the hinge on my computer went poof, broke. So every time after that, I tried to open it back up. It did more and more damage to my computer until it's going to get to the place I can't use it anymore. And the first thing that came to my heart, my mind was, Satan, I rebuke you. This is your fault. Then the Holy Spirit said, No, it's not. It's just a broken hinge. And what I'm saying that is simply is this. Not everything that happens to us is demonic. Not everything that comes our way is because Satan is behind it. Now, I want to blame him for it. Big time. But let me say this, and I'm going to step in waters I usually don't step into. What happened yesterday at the rally was demonic. Spiritual wickedness in high places on display. Yes. And some of the things that I notice, and first of all, I'm, I am saying this right now, I don't care if it would have been Biden, I don't care who it would have been, it should not have happened in the United States of America. Amen. Should not have happened. Not at all. But I guarantee you, a bullet flying that close to bust open your ear there had to be some spiritual forces protecting Donald Trump. Amen. Amen. Had to be. Amen. No ands, ifs, and buts about it. But I also saw a spiritual lesson from the man. What did the Secret Service want to do? Protect him, get him out of there, and I can, I can still hear the recording. Where are my shoes? Put on my shoes. I'm going to do some stomping here. And as they are lift, lifting him up, blood running down his face, he lifts up his arm and says, fight, fight, fight. And what I'm saying here is simply is this. That's how we have to be when it comes to spiritual warfare. We may take a shot or two. We may ha have Satan attack us here and there, and he may, uh, may bring a little bit of discomfort and harm to our life, but we need to rise up. I'm going to put on the shoes of peace, the gospel of peace, and I'm going to fight, fight, fight. I'm going to raise the banner high. I'm going to hold out the shield of faith, and I'm going to believe God to bring this enemy down. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is good, isn't he? Amen. Unknowingly. When we can't make the distinction between what is God, what, what is demonic and what is just life, we become to, mag, to begin to magnify Satan instead of magnifying God. Because we're, again, we're looking for the demonic everywhere we go. When we become unbalanced, it can cause us to depower ourselves, to even lose our faith, lose our authority, and even lose the power of the blood in our lives because we are looking for the wrong thing. Because, this, because being unbalanced causes us to be fearful of the demonic. Being unbalanced is actually empowering Satan in our lives. I'm not going to empower him. My weapons are real, my enemy is real, and my God is real. I don't have to be unbalanced when it comes to these things. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. You see, when we become unbalanced, we miss out on the abundant life. And, I, I, you know, part of this, uh, I'm doing this because I went through a church situation where everything was demonic, everything was bad, to the point that every Christian is demon-possessed. And it caused great fear in the church. And thank God for the word of God that set me free. Amen? 
Amen. Hallelujah. God is so good. And, and saints, here is something that we need to understand here. Being unbalanced can actually cause us to help the kingdom of darkness because of the silly things that we are teaching and believing. Spiritual warfare happens, yes, but not everything is demonic. Sometimes it's our own knucklehead decisions. Have I ever done something stupid? Yeah. Amen? But the good news, saints of God, is this. We can take it back if it happens to us. Amen? Yeah. Hallelujah. Now, the scripture tells us very, very, very clearly that this is happening around us. And we have to be on our guard, because this is what can be bad about spiritual warfare, is we begin to misuse the word of God. We begin to misuse what God has said and use our own ideas with no biblical foundation behind them. You know, it says in the scriptures that we fight against spiritual wickedness in high places. How many read that portion of scripture? Yeah. Now, let me show you how this can get unbiblical, okay? And there's a group of people who were big into spiritual warfare, and praise God for people who want to be part of spiritual warfare. Everyone said amen. But they were not getting any results from their prayers, and so they immediately assumed that they were doing something wrong, okay? There must be something wrong with them. There must be something wrong with their prayer life. But there's, nothing, you know, there's just something wrong. Well, someone found Ephesians 2, 2. It says, since Satan is the prince of the power of the air. That's Ephesians 2 and 2. How many ever read that scripture? And so what they decided was, because of their prayer life not appearing to have any accomplishments or any success, they needed to get higher in the air to prayer. So they went to places like 10-story buildings and higher, and they rent a room in these places, and they would pray because they're getting closer to the principality of the air that way. Well, guess what? That wasn't working well either. So then they decided, and this is true, they rented helicopters and airplanes, some of them, to get higher in the air so they could pray against the principality of the airs. Talk about unbalanced. Talk about unscriptural. Amen? Amen? We need to have the balance that is biblically correct over and over and over again. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. God is so, so good. Now, I'm going to share a, a little bit here about things that I've seen happen in this unbalanced thing going on. I, there was a deliverance ministry at one of the churches, and I believe in deliverance. Hear me, I believe in deliverance. But this deliverance ministry would get, take people in if they were having a trouble with this habit, and we'll, look, we'll remember about that, what the works of the flesh are and what demons are later anyway. And they would come in there having this problem, and they would actually work them up till they get so sick. This is gross. This happened in the Assemblies of God Church. They would throw up. And this is what I think is the worst part. The deliverance people would look at the chunks and say, this is a demon of this and this is a demon of that. Unbalanced. And it makes us all look like nuts. And then they wonder why nothing happens. They just threw up their breakfast. That's all it was. Amen. And then the teaching got so crazy. How many have ever had surgery? According to the teaching that got so unbalanced that if you had surgery... When they cut you open, demons come flying into you. Hell, oh, good grief. But you know what it built? It built all kinds of fear into the people. People who needed surgery refused to get surgery because they didn't want to be demon-possessed. Then it got even more crazy. This is why I, I've lived through this. This is why I get so irate about it, okay? I've seen it happen. I've seen it destroy people. And then this is one really good. Okay, you ready for this? How many have ever belched? You know what it was? You were expelling a demon. How many ever broke wind? Guess what you were doing? You were expelling a demon. What? Unbalanced. And it makes us look like fools. And it destroys people. That's why we need the balance. 
Amen? God is good, isn't he? This one I wish was true. I got a book in my office that they gave us as a textbook. And if you have this demon, then you got five or six other categories of demons in you. And then find another category, and you have all these demons in you. And one of the demons was the demon of fat. <laughs> oh, Lord Jesus, let it be true. <laughs> Cast that thing out of me right now, okay? <laughs> no. Unbalanced. Amen? Amen? And so, yes, spiritual warfare can be good, but spiritual warfare can be bad if we don't have the balance of what the truth of the Word of God really is. I'm for the truth. Anyone else for the truth today? Yes. Amen. Now, there's something else that's very important here. Victories in spiritual warfare can cause us to become prideful and take the glory from God. As Pentecostals, we're superior. We're people of the Spirit of God, aren't we? I mean, we are superior superior over other Christians because we believe in divine healing. We believe in speaking in tongues. We believe in driving out the devil. And we're superior. What happens with pride? Comes major problems. And I can prove that in Scripture, Acts 10, 17 through 20. And the 70 returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. I mean, that's pretty good, right? That word subject means to put in submission. It means to be subordinate to. I think that's pretty good. Everyone think that's pretty good? And then Jesus stops and says this. Now, hold it here, guys. Verse 18. And, then, and he said unto them, I behold Satan, as lightning fall from heaven. Behold, I give unto you power to tread upon the serpents, the serpents and the scorpions. I fit serpents and scorpions together there. Serpents and scorpions, and over all the powers of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Or yell and hallelujah so far, right? Yes. But look this. Notwithstanding in this, rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. And what he's dealing with here, and we have to be careful when we have spiritual victories like this, is that we don't get spiritual pride. Because when we get spiritual pride, we get so heavenly minded, we're no earthly good. And spiritual pride is <laughs> fatal in many cases. Amen? And what we need to rejoice in, our names are written down in the Lamb's book of life. Amen? And I'm going to say this here as simply as don't be afraid of demonic activity. Don't be afraid of spiritual warfare. We know our enemy, but we also know our God. And we know greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And what Jesus is saying, when you have spiritual victories, be humble. Because you are only able to do them through the authority and the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. It had nothing to do with you. It had everything to do with our Lord and Savior. Amen? The next point of this that I want to write to us here is this. As Christians... We are all drafted into the war against the powers of hell. Ladies, you've been drafted. Men, you've been drafted. We've been drafted into the spiritual warfare. Everyone say, I've been drafted. But thank God, not only drafted, but we've been empowered. We have been equipped for everything that God has for us to take back what the enemy has stolen. And the first truth we need to know here about this is this. If you're taking notes, Jesus already won the war with Satan at the cross and his resurrection. 
Your victory has already been accomplished. The battle's already been won because the King of the kings and the Lord of lords died upon that cross. On the third day, the grave could not hold him, but before he was put in that grave, he ascended to the lower parts of hell and he took from Satan the keys to death, hell, and the grave. Hallelujah. He came forth out of that grave, the victorious King of kings and the Lord of lords. And because he lives, we live also. Hallelujah. And his resurrection proves everything he said to be absolutely 100% true. I give power unto you to tread upon the serpents and the scorpions. Hallelujah. God is good, isn't he, saints? Colossians 2 and 15 says this, And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. And I, that's a poor translation of the King James, uh, by the King James Version there. That word there is the cross. It refers back to the next verse. It's talking about the cross. That, is, that, that word there should be cross. Amen. He triumphed over them in his what? Cross. Now I want you to look at that, that first word there, having. What tense is that? Past tense. That word having means already been accomplished. This has been accomplished, thanks to God. Amen? And that word spoiled there. When I look at that word spoiled, I kind of think of my refrigerator sometime. You know, you have those things in those little containers. You're going to use the leftovers. And you stick them back in that refrigerator and you... Two or three months later, you open it up, and what is this green, bluey, gunky, gooey stuff? That's kind of, I see my mind that spoiled, okay? Well, it's just about the same, okay? Anyway, but spoiled means this, to disarm, to ruin, stripping off, <laughs> stripping garments off to the point of complete nakedness. So let's kind of put it this way. Jesus completely stripped the principalities and powers, and left them utterly naked with nothing left at their disposal with which to retaliate. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He spoiled principalities and powers. So how do they have power over us? Because we yield to it. And then show, she will show here, to display, to expose. And the idea, of this, as Paul here is giving these words, the idea here is of a conquering king going to a foreign land and conquering the enemy. And then that foreign king takes captive. He takes things back with him. And the idea here is that when he comes back to, to his home country, there's a great big parade, and, and they're marching all the captive people. They're marching all the things they've taken. They're marching him through, and they're having a big celebration. Our king has conquered the enemy and they're celebrating. Amen? And saints, that's exactly what he's talking about here. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ has conquered the enemy for us already and he's returned victoriously from the enemy's territory. He came out of the grave. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And it's a great time of celebration. And it says openly. And the idea was openly was confidence and, and, and boldness. <laughs> In other words, Jesus Christ finished his work on the cross of Calvary. And because Jesus Christ finished his work on the cross of Calvary, we can have confidence and boldness when we face the enemy also. Everyone agreed, said? Amen. Amen. Now, Ephesians 6 and 12. I'm going to go back to there again here. i got 10 minutes. Can I do it? Hey, all things are possible to them that believe. <laughs> Ephesians 4, we, and that we as Christians, wrestle not against, I want you to notice the word against, flesh and blood, but against. How many against do I have? Two. Against principalities, against, number three, powers, against four, uh, rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. And the first thing I want to look at is this word against, okay? This word against means a forward position. These are military terms. And it means a face-to-face -face encounter. It means a direct contact with evil forces. It's a face-to-face. -face, it's face-to-face -face with principalities and powers. It's eyeball-to-eyeball -eyeball with, with, with power. It's, it's head-on with the rulers of darkness. It's shoulder-to-shoulder -to, -shoulder to spiritual wickedness in high places. It's something, again, I say, this is eyeball. It's face-to-face. -face. And saints of God, I want to tell you right now, if we don't run into the devil once in a while, we're walking the same way he is. Because when we're walking against what he's doing, we're going to run into him. If we're going the same way, we're going to be like dead fish, fish flowing down the stream, okay? And the idea here is, is simply is this, is that this is very, very important. When the Bible repeats a word more than once, what's it saying? 
Very, 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 very important. Pay attention, listen. What I'm about to tell you is absolutely necessary. And we had that repeated here, what, five times, four times, five times? It's repeated. So what Jesus is saying to us through this is pay very much attention here. This word is very important here because we are going to have forward positions, face-to-face -face encounters with the enemy. It's going to happen, but pay attention, okay? The next thing is this. We will have face-to-face -face encounters with Satan's demonic rank and file that have come to assault us. They have come to assault us. Everyone agree with that? That's what's going to happen. But principalities, what's that mean? Well, what we have here, it appears to be a hierarchy in the demonic realms. You know, anyone been in the military, army or anything, navy? They have, you know, they have people with certain rankings. I don't know what they all are, but everyone has a different ranking. Well, in Satan's army, he has rankings also, okay? Uh, and the principality holds the highest and loftiest, loftiest position of rank and authority. And the idea simply is here, this, they are serving the king of darkness. Powers means this. It means delegated authority from Satan, second in command to do whatever they want. And then, in other words, this group of demons carry out all kinds of evil wickedness. They carry it out. And then you have the rulers of darkness of this world. And it means raw power that has been harnessed and put in some, some kind of order. And what we have to understand here is this, that Satan's kingdom has an order to it. It has authority in it. It has an order to it. And the, devils, and the devil deals with the dark legions of demons like they were rank and file troops. And the devil sends these troops out with orders and assignments to steal, kill, and destroy. And these demons are a massive, massive force coming against those who are meant to inherit the kingdom of God. But remember all of this truth. We have more authority than the devil, over the devil, than all his authority in the name of Jesus. Yes, he's got this hierarchy, but you know what's going to happen one day to that hierarchy? <laughs> it's all going to be cast into the lake of fire and burned forever and ever and ever. Amen? Yeah. Now, why does it seem like the church is losing at times against the rulers of darkness here? Why does it seem like that? Well, remember, saints, that the devil has got order. And you know what? The devil's got discipline, and the devil's got commitment in his ranks. Now, you're not going to like this, but it's one we need to hear. As Christians, as a church in America, We only are going to have the power that's necessary to take what Satan has stolen if we buckle down, become disciplined, organized, and be committed. Are we committed? Let me tell you, the church in America is not committed anymore. The average church attendance for a person today is twice a month. Is that committed? If we can't make it to church every week, Sunday or Wednesday, how can we say we're committed? Oh my goodness, if the pastor preaches past noon, I'm just going to walk out. Who cares what the Holy Spirit's doing? I got to beat the Baptist to the restaurant. Committed. Spiritual wickedness in high places. It means wickedness, bad, vile, vicious, malignant. And that's what Satan has thrown out against the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I am here to encourage myself as well as everyone else. 
It's time to make sure we're sold out 100% for the Lord Jesus Christ. He is our Lord. He is our Savior. He is our Master. To overcome, saints of God, we have to be 100% committed. We have to be prepared. We have to be ready. And, saints of God, all we have to do is look again at what happened there at that rally. The Satan sent wicked bad, vile, vicious, malignant things to that rally. But the good news is our Lord is still ruling and reigning. Now, with that said, we need to pray for our country. We need to pray for our nation. We also need to pray for the family who lost a loved one there. We also need to pray for those who are still in critical condition. But we need to add one more to that list. We need to pray for the family of the young man who shot everyone. Can you imagine what they're feeling and going through? No one wins in these situations, none whatsoever. It brings destruction, and that's what Satan does. He spreads destruction wherever he goes. Amen? 1 John 4 and 4, and I am winding down, okay? For you are of God, little children. Who's he talking to? Just help dissect this. You are of God. Little children. Who are you? We're children of God. Amen? So you are of God. Does that make you feel better? And have overcome them. Who's the them? The, The spiritual wickedness in high places. Demonic forces. Who are they? They're coming. Because. I like this word because. Why? Greater is he. That is in you. Did you get that? Greater is he that is in you. Let's say it again. Let's say it this way. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Hallelujah. And saints of God, there's where some confidence begins to build. It's not me, it's, it's who is in me. And to overcome there, it means to be this. It means to be a greater, first of all, it means a greater degree. In other words, the spirit of Christ who's in us is of greater degree, greater power, greater authority than all the powers of hell combined. We've heard this a lot, okay? And then overcome. Overcome means this. It means to be victorious, prevail, conquer, overcome, and win. Saints of God, saints of God, saints of God, you are victorious today through the shed blood of Jesus Christ, and you need to believe that to be true. Everyone agrees said? Amen. And that means I can withstand the false teachers. I can, rest- I can withstand the enemy's attacks. I can I come against his powers and, his, and all that kind of stuff. I can come against that in the name of Jesus and be victorious. Everyone agreed, said? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So, saints of God, the battle's not equal. Because there's no opposite of our God. Amen. Satan is not an equal to our God. He's an inferior to our God. So the battle's not equal. We've already won. We've already been equipped. We already have the power. Now we have to possess what's been given to us in the name of Jesus. Remember the promised land? He says, go in wherever your feet shall trod. It's yours. But you know why? He'd already given it to him. Now go in and drive out the, 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 the tall people. Go in and bring down the walls. Go in and conquer it because it's your spiritual inheritance. And take him back what Satan stole from us is our spiritual inheritance in Jesus' name. And saints of God, I would rather see us get to a place where we don't allow him to take it to begin with. Amen. But if he does, we're going to take it all back in the name of Jesus. Amen? Amen. God is good. Hallelujah. Let's give the Lord a praise offering. Hallelujah, Lord God. Thank you and praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Father God, we come to you right now in the name of Jesus. And first of all, Lord, I want to pray for those people in this service here right now that aren't feeling well. Lord God, I, I pray for Butch right now, Lord, that you would touch his hip there, that healing would come. I, I pray for Mary that you bring healing to her body also. I pray also for Tina that you continue to bring strength and healing to her body. And Lord, for every other situation in this room, I pray, Lord God, that your healing virtue would flow. Lord God, we're taken back with the promises that you have given to us, and we're claiming that healing. We're claiming that deliverance. We're claiming, you to do, we're claiming for you to do great and mighty things, Lord Jesus. By your stripes, we have been healed because you sent your word to heal our diseases. And 
Lord, we give you praise and glory for the victories that are coming. We give you praise and glory in advance for the miracles that are going to take place. And Lord God, we do lift up this nation to you. And Lord God, first of all, we just want to thank you, Lord, because your hand was definitely at that, that rally there, Lord God. We know your hand of deliverance was there. Your, your hand of freedom was there. Your hand of protection was there. But Lord, we lift up all our political leaders to you. We lift up our current president, Lord God. Your hand be placed upon him and protect him and keep him safe also. Lord, for others who are involved in this, Lord God, may you be with them and, and encourage them. And we pray for the family who lost the, the, the loved one there at that rally, Lord, that you would give them a peace that passes all understanding, that you would give them a comfort and strength. Lord God, only, only, only you can do that in a situation like this. And Lord, for the others who are still hospitalized in critical condition, Lord, we ask for a miracle that you would just raise them up and bring healing to their bodies. And Lord God, we also pray for the family of the shooter, Lord God. Lord, we can't even begin to understand what they're going through, but Lord, minister your strength and your peace unto them also. And Lord God, I also pray, Lord, that you would give us a Holy Ghost boldness to walk in faith and walk in victory. And Lord God, get to that place where we are willing to be soldiers of the cross, totally sold out and committed to you in every area of our lives. Lord Jesus, we thank you now in advance for the victories, and we thank you for the truth. No weapon formed against us shall prosper, but we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. In your name we pray. And all God's people agreed said, Amen. Amen. God bless you in Jesus' name. Hold it. Hold it. Don't leave that. Don't leave that. Come back. I'm sorry. Come back. Come back. Come back. Come back. Come back. I, I forgot something. Okay. One of the things that we as a church believe that we need to reach out to our community. Everyone agree said? Amen. Amen. And what we're going to do here is simply like we're gonna do, what we did last year is that we're going to give away school supplies at the, the um, car show this year. And the school supplies, you notice all those boxes when you came in? That's part of the boxes. And inside of these boxes is a whole bunch of these things. And they're full of, of, of things for the kids, for the class requirement. We're also going to give out this bag. And in that bag, there will be a, a, life, a life book to help lead young people to Jesus. Also, we're going to give away a koozie thing here with a water bottle in it. And it'll, hopefully it'll be cold when the time comes. And we're also going to give away one of our pins here, Grace Point Church, and one of these nifty bags. These have been a great hit wherever we have gone. How many think that's a good I think to do, to reach out? And we've got our names on things here so people know we are here, and we just think that's great. Now, how many have discovered by chance that your grocery bills are through the ceiling? <laughs> Definitely. Well, we, as a church, were trying to do everything that we did last year, and we gave away shoes last year. For us to buy the shoes now is $15 a pair. So we just kind of like nixed that idea. Okay, how many think that's, that's, that's cheap but it's high? And so this year we're not going to give out the backpacks because we're trying to cut some costs down on those. And so we're just going to go with these things here plus a few small toys for the kids that's from the dollar store, dollar toys, okay? Anyway, it looks like buying the school supplies and everything that we're going to buy to get this done is going to cost about $2,500. And that's cutting everything back, okay? And so what I'm asking to do as a church is that we want to start a fundraiser, which you know I do those a lot, right? I don't do them very often whatsoever. And begin to try to raise money for the, the, the Act Out account. And we're hoping that we can be able to, to, be able to raise $2,500 in order to, to have all these supplies to give out to people who need them. And I, I can tell you, last year, it was amazing that, did we get taken advantage of? Yeah, there were some who took advantage of us. I know that. That happens. But others were tears because they didn't know how they were going to get their kids supplies. They didn't know how they were going to make things that meet and all that. And we were there to be Jesus to them, to give them a cup of water in Jesus' name. So if you would help us out, this is how you can help us out. Is in the next few weeks, start making a donation to the Act Out account. Just mark Act Out on your, on your envelope. And Act Out account simply means we're acting like the book of Acts. I had someone say, we're acting out, we're acting like bad children. No, 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 it's the book of Acts. We're acting out like Acts, okay? We're ministering in the name of Jesus. And our goal again is $2,500. So I don't know, I can't write a check for $2,500, can you? But if a bunch of us get together, whatever we have, and give to the fund we can meet the needs and have this provided. And you know what? I know my God can do it. Yep. Amen? So I'm sorry I, I, I forgot about this. I was too excited about everything else. But saints of God, let's show uh, Augusta, Butler County, there's a church here 
that loves Jesus, but more importantly, a church that loves people and wants to meet people's needs. Amen? Amen. Amen. So if you can help with that, God bless you in Jesus' name. But one other thing, real quick, don't take your tithe money and mark it act out. (laughs) I've seen that happen before. I'll just take my tithe money and put act out on it and not give my tithe. That's not a tithe. Your tithe is a tithe. That act out account is a special offering which talks about in the New Testament. That's done out of a man feels like they can do it. That they, they, you know, this is our love for God and what they feel that God wants them to do in that. A tithe is a tithe. Okay? The act out account is an offering above your tithes and offerings. Amen? Amen. God bless you in Jesus' name. Now you can go after the third or fourth time. Amen. <laughs>